And hey, welcome back to Hannity. So what is the status of Newt Gingrich in the presidential race? Our own Britt Hume asked the former speaker over the weekend. Watch this. You seem reconciled to the likelihood, if not the inevitability, of Mitt Romney as your party's nominee. Well, I think you have to be realistic. Given the size of his organization, given the number of primaries he's won, uh, he is far and away the most likely Republican nominee. And if he does get to 1,144 delegates, I'll support him. I'll do everything I can this fall to help him defeat Obama, because the, the primary goal of the entire Republican Party has to be to defeat Barack Obama. So what makes this maybe the most important election of our lifetime. And joining us now is the former Speaker of the House himself, uh, Newt Gingrich. Mr. Speaker, welcome back. Good to see you. It's good to see you. You, you, know, know, you know, I have to say, Sean, if you, what you just played was exactly right. He most likely not certain if he gets there. Uh, that got somehow translated almost instantly uh, into something I didn't say. Uh, I, I found it remarkable because yesterday afternoon I joined millions of Americans in watching the Masters. And the two guys who ended up in the uh, sudden death were neither one in first place when the last round began. Now, neither of them dropped out. No, I mean, and yet, I've been, since June of last year, the elite media has said over and over and over, you know, I'm dead, I should get out of it, when am I going to quit, when do I recognize reality? I am in here, I'm thinking about getting it tattooed up here, all the way to Tampa, <laughs> okay? Uh, okay? I just want to get across. <laughs> we're, we're fighting, we're, and you've known me for years, we are fighting for very big issues that matter to the future of our country and the future of our children and grandchildren. And I'm going to continue doing that as long as it is possible to do it, period. Uh, now, I, I, I find it confusing why that is such a hard message to drive into the media. No, I, I, it's not for me. And, and, and I'll be honest, there's, and I've said this to Governor Romney, I've said it to you, I've said it to Rick Santorum. Um, and I know maybe, you know, as an outsider looking in, but also having been out on the campaign trail with all three of you, seeing how hard it is. And you actually were talking a little bit about this yesterday um, and, and watching it in a very odd and a very strange way, as difficult and as painful as I'm sure it has been for all of you at times. And maybe, you know, I've also seen, you know, moments of joy for all of you. Uh, and there's a lot of reward in this. But, you know, in a very strange way, you all made each other better stronger, tougher. Sure. Um, I mean, don't you feel you're a lot different as, as so far this deep into the process? And don't you find usually by the Super Bowl, the teams are better than they were the opening week? Well said. I mean, of course, it's the, I mean, you know, all the, and, 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 and notice that, by the way, the Democrats survive with Obama and Clinton fighting each other all the way to late June. This panic-stricken national establishment paranoia uh, is just pure foolishness. The fact is, there are big issues at stake. I'm, I'm talking to you tonight from North Carolina. Callista is giving a speech in New York. I'm on the way to Delaware uh, on Wednesday, and I'm going to stop off in Philadelphia Tuesday night. Then I'm going on to uh, St. Louis. I'll be back here in Raleigh and uh, Greensburg, Greensboro on uh, Saturday. You know, I, I don't quite know how to get across to the, the reporters covering politics. That's a real campaign schedule. I'm here doing real campaign things. They can come join me tomorrow if they'd like to in Eastern Carolina. I'm glad to see them. They can come join me on Wednesday in uh, Delaware. Glad to see them. You, you did mention, because it got pretty intense at times between you and Governor Romney in particular uh, during this campaign. And you did say that you were, quote, and I want to make sure I get this right, giving up this, you know, you hit as hard as uh, you could. He hit me as hard as he could. So you talked about that. Have you met with, have you spoken with Governor Romney about how personal this has gotten, that you've gotten to this point where there's a oh, little sure. bit of, no, you haven't. Yeah, I'm not, like, like, yeah well, no, I mean, we've talked about it over, over time. But look, I mean, I've also talked to him about it publicly in several debates. Uh, I was trying yesterday to make a bigger point that I hope every conservative in the country will agree with. Whether it's Gingrich, Santorum, or Romney, and obviously I'd rather have it be Gingrich, whoever we nominate, we have to beat Obama. And so when people say, how are you going to get back together? I tell them, pretty simple, you put up a picture of Obama. And 
I guarantee you that yeah. Mitt Romney will support Rick Santorum or Newt Gingrich. I believe Rick Santorum will support Newt Gingrich or Mitt Romney. I will support either Rick Santorum or Romney. Mm -hmm. If the alternative is Barack Obama, yeah. this is not a hard discussion. You, and you, that's why people have got to be realistic about it. You, you also talk a lot in, in the last couple of times that I've had a chance to speak with you about how important the party platform is to you. And that is what happens in Tampa. Explain what you mean by that. Well, first of all, somebody who's been very active trying to help build this party since 1960, I think platforms do matter because they're about more than one individual. They're about a, a thing called the Republican Party. Uh, I'm going to argue very strongly for an American energy independence plank that I think will be very, very powerful. I'm going to argue for young people having the right to have a personal Social Security savings account. I think we ought to take all the royalties we get from oil and gas, put them into a special debt reduction fund to start paying off the national debt. Uh, there are several other big areas that I'll be talking about in the next few days that I think really matter. And here's the challenge for Governor Romney. He has said as, at the CPAC speech, for example, that he's severely conservative. He also had a, a communications director who said, well, the whole campaign's like an etch-a-sketch. You can erase it and start over. I think the platform is an opportunity for Governor Romney and for Senator Santorum and myself to communicate to the country what a Republican team would do and to try, frankly, to get our Senate and House candidates to sign up for a platform so that people understand they're voting for real change. We don't just want not Obama. We want to move Washington back towards more conservative government, more limited government, implementing the Tenth Amendment to return power back home, and a whole series of steps that we think really matter for America's future. This is something I've done my whole career. I believe deeply in the importance of the party standing for something real. And I'm going to campaign from here to Tampa to see if every delegate, who happen, whoever they happen to be for for president, I hope every Republican delegate will agree that they want a solid conservative platform and a platform that gives us a signal for where we would take America when we win this fall. Well, I've got to be honest. I'm listening to everything that you're saying. And you've always been a guy of big ideas. And if we don't adopt the things that you just mentioned, if we don't put them in writing and give people that that positive reason to support a new administration, we're not going to fix. We're not going to turn this problem around. We're not going to turn. Right. You know, we're not going to write the ship and get and get America on the right track. So I think I agree with you. I think that's very key. Um, so that that I, I and I hope that's not a battle, to be honest with you. I hope that's something we can all agree on, because having interviewed all of you, it seems to be the, the points you're making are ones that all of you seem to agree on. Look, I, I helped in, in 1984, a bunch of us led by Jack Kemp. Uh, developed a no tax increase pledge against the Reagan White House staff. Reagan liked it. His staff hated it. We fought over it for about seven weeks. It was very healthy for the party, and it really decisively made us the anti-tax increase party in a way which has lasted all the way up to today. These kind of discussions, spending the next five months, first of all, finishing out the nomination, and remind, let me remind you, I am not conceding to Governor Reagan, he, I mean, to Governor Romney. He's the front runner. He's not currently the nominee. He's got to win those delegates. They're not going to be given to him. I'm going to do everything I can to get a delegate. Every vote I get in North Carolina or in Delaware is a vote for a more conservative platform. And because North Carolina is proportional, it's a vote for delegates that are going to clearly vote for a more conservative platform. So I want to campaign all the way up. We're going to get to Tampa. In the process, let's have a national conversation not just beat Obama, but what do we do to replace his bad policies, his bad bureaucrats, his bad positions, and get America back on the right track? You know, I think that's something that, that if people want to get the country on track, we better have those ideas, put them in writing, put them in the platform, and then we can hold everybody accountable, too, which I think is a big part of the equation. Mr. Speaker, always good to see you, and uh, we'll see you out there on the campaign trail again soon. Thanks for being with us. All